All right, guys, what's up? So if you notice, the camera angle is a little bit different, and this is because this is a little bit of a different type of video. So before, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen the, the progression-based video that I did about tips for becoming a better bike rider. This is a branch of that, but it also goes crazy in-depth. We're gonna be talking about things like flow state, flow triggers, heart rate, heart rate variability, and how all of that ties together to help you get into a state where you can really analyze what's going on with your trigger feel it out and essentially get like slow motion superhuman powers it sounds psycho but I'll talk about some examples and you guys will be like oh my god that's happened to me so we're gonna get really in-depth into that let's get right into the video All right, so before we actually get into the video, I made you guys watch the intro, but now I'm going to tell you, I just ordered a bunch of stickers. You see these stickers behind me? I ordered a bunch more of those and a bunch more Transfer Dugster Bob stickers. Now, the reason I ordered them is because on my live, Jake tipped me a stupid amount of money, and I said, look, we're just, we're just going to buy everyone stickers. So... Everyone who joins my texting community is getting some stickers. There's not too many people in there right now, but text the number that pops up on the screen. It's actually me. Um, I send you guys tips. I send you guys whatever you want, like reach out and say, hey, I need help with this. I'm looking for this and boom, I'll get some help for you. And um, yeah, so anyway, now now I got all that out of the way. Let's Let's start talking about some of this good stuff. I'm gonna switch over, we're on my screen now. And if we look at this, this is yesterday. Okay, so I slept for nine hours. That's crazy. No, normally, I try to sleep for four or five, uh, but I didn't set any alarms yesterday morning. I said, look, I need to get get some rest because I'm going to ride all day, all day. It wasn't very long. But anyway, this got me a 58% recovery. A lot of stuff ties into that, like your heart rate variability. And that's the whole reason I got Whoop. Okay, this is what Whoop is. It's this thing on my wrist, and it tracks a lot. And I've been having a lot of fun with it, tracking how my sleep is, how my heart rate variability is, which essentially ties into our vagus nerve, which has to do with our fight or flight response. Like it's a whole crazy different concept. But for me, I wanted to learn more about it because it helps with your discipline, your productivity and things like that. Mine is extremely low for an adult, extremely low, especially for someone my age. So that's disappointing. But anyway, about this, the, the reason I got this thing was to help me with that. And then I was like, oh my God, I can track my riding. So look, let's look at, these are my ridings, but I want to look through the whole day. How do I get back to that? <laughs> now we're at my sleep. Oh, look, this is my sleep. This is crazy though. Anyway, you guys don't really care about all those details. I'm just trying to find the overall day. I just want to watch the whole day, not the strain, the day. Hold on. <sighs> Oh, overview. There we go. Okay, we're back. Sorry, my bad. Um, I, I thought I figured this out, but okay. Look, I rode yesterday for, well, from about this time, eight to about midnight. We did ride until midnight. It was crazy. Uh, we were here from here to here. Okay. Oh, it should show mouse clicks when I click. Anyway, God damn it. From there to there, from this peak to this peak, we were at regional skate park and... I like, uh, everyone was pretty much riding street when we started off, so I kind of hung around there. And then towards the end, I went to the bowl and had like a pretty solid session doing stuff that I enjoyed doing, going fast, you know, all that stuff. Then the lights shut off. We kind of hung around for a little bit and then we said, okay, let's go over to Diana. So we drove over to Diana and this is when, when I was at Diana. Diana's a different skate park. I'll show clips from both of them and to kind of show you what I was doing, but it was just a normal session. Okay. But Diana, I was riding very well. And if we talk about it, I'm not sure when I want to jump over to it, but essentially throughout the day, the first part of my day, I was just riding okay, but as the day progressed, I really picked up on my riding and I was really consistent. I just felt really dialed, okay? Now, when I look at this, a lot of this is, it goes by your heart rate variability or your heart rate, and that's how much stress you're putting on your body. That's how much strain it gives me. So this session, I gave my body a lot more strain. And you'll also notice that the peaks here were a lot higher. And now, now this is when I was working on a different trick. So essentially right here, this is the first session at Diana. This is the first session at Regionals, okay? At Diana, this is the later one, right? This, this huge peak, okay? 
we got here, we kind of hung out. I did a few things. I think I did a truck. I did like just some small basic runs on this flyout bank we were riding. And then right here, I decided this is when I really jumped in. I jumped in the bull and I just started ripping the bull, having a lot of fun doing that. Okay. So that's what this is throughout here. Now, later on, we're going to talk a little bit about um, Malcolm Gladwell's book called Blink. He talks about optimum heart rates, and this is bad, to be straight up. These peaks are really bad. These peaks are really healthy. This is a really healthy range right here. So I think what happened here is, and I could tell, I was really sketchy on the bike at this point. I was doing things that that normally aren't a big issue for me, but it was, it, it just didn't feel right. Does that make sense? And again, this is where we were warming up, just doing some basic things. So riding right here was interesting because I didn't know what's going on at the time, but now I can reflect on it. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Why I was kind of so sketchy, why it didn't feel good. Okay. We took a break. So this is me just sitting there chilling, right? Probably playing on my phone. I don't know, replying to your texts in the text community. And then I drop in and so after that rest, I got myself back down to like a recovery rate. Okay. So after recovery, it kind of helped me reset. And by resetting, I was in a lot more control for the rest of the session. This is crazy. So just jumping out of my car, coming and doing this session, I never got to recover. And it sent me up here in an uncomfortable thing where my body was in the fight or flight response the whole time. Now, after that recovery, I was able to have a really good session for the rest of this. It was killer. Um, I got a double whip again. I got a bar to whip. Like these are all tricks that I don't do very often and haven't done in a while. So I was like, this is sick. And it was just a solid session all the way here. And um, then then we left, right? We went to go eat and had Whataburger. God. Um, but, it, but so this is what this session looked like at Diana right here. Now regionals, this was a lot longer of a session. So these peaks aren't as exaggerated because I was here for a little bit longer, uh, two hours, right? This one was an hour and a half. And again, this is where we started out riding the street section. So right here, this first part, street section. And I just like, look, the, the peaks is when I dropped in, I go in, I do a few tricks, and then I sit down and wait for my next run. Okay, that's what those are. And this is a this is a pretty decently healthy, but as you'll see again, you, these aren't optimum. Okay, they're a little bit too low. Now I jump over here to the bowl. I start doing some runs through the bowl and uh, doing things that kind of push me a little bit, but things I have fun doing. And right here we jump up to a really optimum range, and then we hang out in the parking lot, and that's about it. Okay, so that's basically how my day went. And what I want to look at going back to this screen is compare this. Okay, these peaks of riding with my peaks throughout the day, they're, they're significantly lower from when I'm putting my body through exertion. Now, right here, what did I do from one to, you know, I was probably getting gas and getting ready to leave right here. So I was outside, it's super hot. I had to make sure like the, there's oil in my car and transmission fluid because my car is kind of a POS. And uh, so, so here I am angry and stressed out checking on all that stuff before I go drive an hour to ride. But anyway, for the most part, everything's moderately, um, everything's pretty low. Okay. Now what I want to get back into, so remember these peaks. Okay. Because now we're going to talk about, this is blink and this is the rise of Superman. The rise of Superman is an incredibly good book about action sports athletes and how they harness flow state to achieve essentially the unachievable. Uh, it talks about Danny Way in there, skater who jumped the Great Wall of China on a broken ankle. He jumped it the first time, broke his ankle, went back up, jumped it again. And like, I couldn't even roll on a skateboard with a sprained ankle. Okay. More or less a broken ankle, but Malcolm Gladwell blink. This book is a game changer guys. I'm going to leave a link for it because I really think if you're serious about this kind of stuff, you should understand how it works. One thing that he talks about a lot is the power of when our bodies decide we get stressed out, we go into different heart rate zones and it puts us in different either fight or flight. It just puts us in a, in a zone where we can really analyze what's going on or shut our body down to conserve energy so that we don't die, right? This is a primitive function that we've had for a long time. This talks about police shootings right here, okay? So here's just a quote. I want you guys to think about this and think about any time that you've felt really scared and you've had this happen, okay? Dan's head, he started to bring it around on me. 
This all happened really fast in milliseconds, and at the same time, I was bringing my gun up. Dan was still fighting with him, and my only thought, oh, the only thought that came through my mind was, oh dear God, don't let me hit Dan. I fired five rounds. My vision changed as soon as I started to shoot. It went from seeing the whole picture to just just the suspect's head. Everything else disappeared. I didn't see Dan anymore. I didn't see anything else. All I could see was the suspect's head. Okay. Now think about a time when you jump in the air. Okay. You throw a trick and it does not go right. I can think about this. Say a three whip. Okay. I can think about a specific time I popped out. I threw the three whip. I threw it too early. My rotation of the bike was countering my rotation of the three and it just didn't work. Okay. So next it's, it's all so fast, but it's, you can see it back in slow motion. You ditch the bike, you suck up your body, you finish the rotation and you're good. Right. But that shouldn't be in slow motion. And the reason that it does is because we are like, our brains are crazy, crazy smart, crazy powerful. And So think about a time that that happened for you, okay? But now this talks about the optimal state of arousal. And in the optimal state of arousal, it's when stress improves your performance. It's when our heart rate is between 115 and 145 beats per minute. So below that, it's not really doing anything for us. It's like right now, my heart rate's probably below 115. I'm not performing. I don't need it, right? I'm just chilling. Now, but when I go out to ride, I want that heart rate between 115 and 145 because it starts to narrow your vision. So like, look down here, it talks about um, Larry Bird being able to clearly see the court like better than anyone else because he played in that optimal state. Most of us get too aroused. So we go over that point and we're not able to really harness what happens when our body is in that peak arousal state okay so after 145 bad things begin to happen complex motor skills start to break down doing something with one hand becomes difficult and then at 175 we we fully shut down Um, that's like you're walking along right primitive you you're walking along in the forest you come across a tiger and you're like i'm about to die okay that's going to shoot your heart rate up to 175. You're going to shut down to conserve energy and like, hopefully you don't die right now. This is crazy because look at this. Okay. 115 would be about right here and 145 would be about right here. So, you know, those healthy peaks I was telling you this whole session right here is in that range. And most of this session is in that range right here. Okay. And with here, this is bad, right? This is damn near, oops, damn near body shutting down up here. Um, But right, oh my God, that's so annoying. Um, But anyway, what is going on? I'm about to lose it. So anyway, this is the body shutting down. This is over here, good area, nice healthy peaks throughout this session, nice healthy peaks throughout this session. And that's crazy to think about because these aren't things that I'm actually consciously doing when I'm riding, but reflecting on it, I'm like, that's crazy. So over here where I'm way up on that 175, like I said, the session was not going good. Tricks were not happening like they're supposed to, and it was just off. But going over here, when I'm back in that peak stage, things are going good. Okay. And the biggest thing here is the heightened level of threat represented by a heart rate of 175 and above. The body considers that kind of psychological control a non-essential activity. Blood is withdrawn from our outer muscle layer and concentrated into core muscle mass. So all of these things that we don't even know are happening happen when we're at different stress stages. And I know I talked about this in the other video. I'll put that at the end here. But one thing is if you can backflip and you're considering doing a double backflip that's going to scare you but it's not going to be the end of the world for you right so doing something like that is going to put your heart rate up in that peak stage maybe a little bit past it but it's going to be right there okay but let's say you've never done a backflip before and you're going to skip the backflip and go straight for the double backflip that's going to put you way up here at the 175, like that's going to scare you to death and it's going to be counterproductive. You're going to shut down. You're not even going to come close and it's just, it's useless. Okay. And the reason I bring this up is for you guys getting into the sport, wanting to progress, start small and take incremental jumps, do things that scare you just a little bit. 
so that it does raise your heart rate and it does get you kind of nervous about it, but only to the extent that it raises it into that optimal range. You don't want to raise it to things that scare you to death, right? Because then you're not going to learn anything. So you want to have control and you want to be smart about what you're trying and when you're trying different things. The other tip for you along these lines is to work into it. So if we look at these different peak ranges, it's not straight, right? It's pretty straight, but it's not completely straight. And as it climbs, that's me in the early stages of a run putting stuff together. So if I just drop in and throw a double tail whip, that's cool, okay? But to me, that's a straight up, straight down. And that's kind of counterproductive. If I drop in, I do a, a 360 somewhere, I do an air, I come back around, and then I do the double tail whip, I'm building up my heart rate to get to that point so that when I throw it, I'm theoretically in the zone. And I've noticed this, and I never put it together until recently, is that when I'm trying a brand new trick, if I just drop in and try it, I have a really hard time doing it. But if I drop in a little bit farther back, throw together some run, some tricks that are really easy for me early on, throwing that second trick, I'm already in a flow state, and I'm already flowing into it. It's essentially second nature to throw that trick, and I get um, a lot better outcome going that route. So if you're struggling with something, Stop trying to just throw it right away. Piece together something that can kind of build up your heart rate, build up your confidence right before you throw it. That's going to help you out so, 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 so much. The only thing I wanted to talk about in the rise of Superman right now, there's so much more coming out in BMX brand, but that's a few months out, okay, is creative triggers. Now, creativity releases dopamine, and dopamine is obviously really important. But, and and that goes back to what I'm saying about piecing a line together is because you can get creative with it. And while that also builds your heart rate, it's also releasing dopamine. Dopamine does more than just stimulate our emotions and, our incre and increase our motivation. It also tightens focus. So just like that increased heart rate narrows our vision, tightens focus, this is complementary to that and can really help you become a better rider. It drives us into the now and speeds entrance into flow. Flow is so important. You guys do some different research about flow because it's mind-blowing. And what all this means is the creative act, one that requires risk-taking and pattern recognition, is itself exceptionally potent flow trigger. When you're concentrating on something that matters, explains Harvard psychologist Ned Hollowell. He's also an ADHD uh, psychologist, crazy. When you can't process an automatic pilot, that's when flow shows up. That's creativity to a T. And once you've thrown out the rule book and begin making creative decisions, the risk involved tightens focus and triggers neurobiological cascade. It sweeps you right into flow. And on that note, guys, I'm going to put out more videos about flow, talking about things that'll help you out. But think about that, okay? When you're riding, get creative, have fun with it because you're going to get into that flow state. You're going to raise that heart rate and you're literally going to progress at such a faster rate than anyone else. You're going to be able to piece it all together and take your riding to the next level. That was a lot. I just talked for I don't know how long. 19 minutes, Jesus Christ. Um, okay, so that should help you guys out a lot. Now, I'm going to plug two things here. Bike School. We are almost done with Bike School. Huge online course, over 60 different how-to videos from Nick and I. Break it down so much so that you can learn tricks at your own pace, take your riding so to the next level. We also have a Facebook you group. To to you get to post your videos rider. in the it's Facebook designed. group. We give you feedback. Other riders give you feedback. It's going to help you out a lot, okay? Second thing, I have a coaching thing that I do. It's $10 a month. I'll put the link in the description. You literally, like I, this guy, Salvador Blanco, okay? Homie, he's always in the lives. He joined the coaching thing recently. He said, well, I want to learn this, this, and this. I said, show me your bunny hops. Showed me his bunny hops. They were, they were pretty small. He's working on it. And I gave him some tips. I sent him a slow motion video of one. I said, hey, check this out. This is what you need to do. I broke it down step by step. I gave him some goals to hit and told him to send me more videos soon. Sent me one just today. Okay, this has been a week or so. His form is incredible and he's literally tripled the height of his bunny hop. And I'm like, okay, you're like almost there. Work on this, this, and this, and then we're going to start hopping up things. So being able to do that with you guys is so much fun. If either of those interest you, text me, ask me more about it, and I'll be able to help you out. Now, 
I guess that's it. You know, I hope you guys think about joining those two things to take your writing to the next level. If neither of that interests you, subscribe because I'm going to post a lot of stuff like this and I'll let you know when BMX Brain comes out because that's going to be a game changer for the mental aspect of BMX. You guys have a great rest of your day. We'll see you in the live Sunday or Friday. Thanks.